Good morning, greetings friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I am your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures if you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation over the last 32 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like acne, psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. And while some folks may call that a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, if you have a health challenge you or a loved one needs help with, we are here for you on the bright side. 844-236-6010 is our number. You'll always get a little bit of a twist on how to take care of your health and your body. Everything you hear on this program is coming out of my head and my experience, as well as my research. I didn't just read it on the internet. This is the experience of 32 years, the accumulated experience of 32 years of working with patients. And what you hear on this program is not stuff that you can just read about on the internet. If you have questions about anything that has to do with health, we are here for you. 844-236-6010 is our number. That's 844-236-6010. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the Bright Side, please go to brightsideben.com pharmacistben.com or criticalhealthnews.com. You can purchase your favorite longevity, longevity products right off the website. You can also call 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470 for more information. And if you'd like to join the Brightside Ben team and start yourself a longevity business, you don't have to know a lot about nutrition. All that matters is that you want to learn about nutrition. You don't have to know anything about business. All that matters is that you want to learn about business. Longevity will teach you about business, teach you about sales, teach you about health. You can make a supplemental income. You can make a full-time income. You can work out of your home. You can write off all the tax benefits associated with having your own business, including your rent and your mileage and your stamps and uh, your office accoutrements all while you're helping change the world at the most fundamental level, level there is, the level of personal individual health. You don't have to know a lot about nutrition. You don't have to know a lot about business. All that matters is that you want to know about business and you want to know about health. You can just allow it to happen. It's almost as though you had your own personal health coach and your own personal business coach that works just with you when you work with longevity. If you're interested, please call 866-735-2470 for more information or click on the Join the Team link at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. Okay, welcome back to the Bright Side. We've been talking about fats, the different varieties of fats, the different lengths of fats. For the most part, we said that when we refer to dietary fats, we're talking about acids. These fats, these dietary fats have an acidic nature. This acidic nature is why we call them fats. Fatty acids, or that term, fatty acids, as in essential fatty acids, because these dietary fats have an acidic pH. They have a highly electrical nature. Acids are highly electrical. Alkaline is a little bit, it is less electrical. Alkaline, you can think of alkaline substances, which are the opposite of acid substances, as an acid, acid alkaline. You can think of alkaline substances as missing electrical energy, and you can think of acid substances having electrical energy. When uh, when we talk about the blood being alkaline or wanting the blood to be alkaline, what we're really talking about is that the blood is missing a little bit of energy. That allows it to act like a vacuum because nature abhors a vacuum. And when something is missing, when something is missing something, it becomes a vacuum. And because nature abhors a vacuum, it will suck in energy. So when it, we want the blood to be alkaline so it can suck up energy. We don't want it acid because then it's got too much energy. 
Fatty acids carry a lot of energy with them. This is what makes them so unbelievably valuable for the body and cells themselves. Fatty acids are incorporated into the cells and they pull their elect electrical energy in, especially in the cell membrane, the outer part of the cell. The coating of a cell is highly electrically charged, largely because of these fatty acids. So fatty acids have an electrical property and an energy giving property. They're acids, they have extra electrons, so to speak. We just call them electrical. These fatty acids come in three major biological forms. And uh, three, I should say three, well, three, ba three main biological forms. We, one biological form we call phospholipids. The other biological form we call fatty acids. That's what uh, dietary fatty acids or triglycerides technically. We'll talk about that here in a minute. And then the third kind is cholesterol. The phospholipids are incredibly interesting. The phospholipids have a, their fats, lipid, and they've got a little piece of phosphorus. Phosphorus, you can think of a phosphorus match, or you can think of fireworks. Phosphorus is super mega electrical. And the lipids, the, fatties, the fatty acids are already electrical. You stick a phosphorus on there and you got a super duper highly electrical charged molecule, a phospholipid. And the phospholipids are really important for brain health, obviously, because they're so electrical. They're going to have n neurological properties and brain health properties. Our, cell mem our, our nerve cell membranes, our, our brain depends on these things, these phospholipids. You can find phospholipids in eggs. Eggs are, in fact, this is one of the, maybe the most important and most valuable element of an egg is the phospholipids. At least it's, I don't say the most because an egg has so many good things in it, but, but one of the most valuable compounds in an egg is the phospholipids. Fish, fish are also a good source of phospholipids, organ meats. If you're a vegetarian, wheat germ is probably your best source of, pho of phospholipids. Legumes, especially peanuts, will get you some. Algae and yeast will get you some phospholipids and eating all of these foods on a regular basis, eggs daily if, you're, if you can eat eggs, fish and organ meats if you're not a vegetarian or wheat germ, scoop of wheat germ or a spoonful of wheat germ every morning is a great way to get your phospholipids if you're a vegetarian. Algae and yeast, as I say, on a daily basis, nutritional yeast on a daily basis, algae and spirulina on a daily basis. I'd stay away from the peanuts and the legumes, but if you can handle legumes, they're good sources of phospholipids um, as well as other nutrients. We rip on legumes a lot, but, but there's no getting around the fact that legumes are a great source of protein and great source of other nutrients, of phospholipids and good fats, but, uh, but a lot of people do have a problem with these legumes. Anyway, phospholipids are key players in the health of the brain, the nervous system, the skin is very dependent on phospholipids for its antimicrobial properties. There are phospholipids in the skin that actually fight bacteria and fight viruses. There are phospholipids in the skin that help to keep the skin healthy and moist. Phospholipids are also important for the muscle in the form of lecithin, which is probably the most common phospholipid that most people have heard of. Is lecithin is a complex of different phospholipids. Uh, lecithin is a component of bile, so phospholipids have, help us digest our food. Second class of, uh, uh, of these dietary fats, in addition to phospholipids, is cholesterol and cholesterol derivatives, so-called cholesterol esters. And there's so much to say about cholesterol, and we've said so much about cholesterol. We do an entire daily program just on the importance and the health relevance of cholesterol. These days, thanks to some serious pharmaceutical company PR and advertising and marketing, most people, including your doctor, thinks of cholesterol as a bad guy. It's not just, it's not just the average person that's biochemically ignorant. Unfortunately, our medical professionals tend to be biochemically ignorant. And one of the classic examples of the biochemical ignorance of the modern, of the representatives of the modern medical model is this idea that cholesterol is a bad guy. Cholesterol is not a bad guy. It's this demonization of cholesterol is so unfortunate because in my humble opinion, cholesterol is the most important, functional, health relevant, biologically valuable molecule in the body. I don't know how else to say, how, how, what else I can to say to impress upon listeners and everybody I talk to how vitally important cholesterol is. It's the difference between a human being and a fern plant. It's the difference between a, a walking animal, a thinking animal, and a plant. Not that plants don't have an, an ability to think, because they do, but the very advanced ability to think and the very advanced ability to ambulate or to move around or to walk is dependent on cholesterol. Cholesterol is your livingness molecule. That's the second kind of fat. Third kind of fats, that's the one I want to spend uh, most of the time talking about today. That's the triglycerides. We'll uh, continue talking about that when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back after this. Welcome back to the Bright Side, friends.
Friends. I'm pharmacist Ben, and thank you for being here. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific, 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on the archive pages at benfuchsarchives.com. Thank you to Peter in the UK for that one. Uh, really cool website, by the way, if you haven't checked that out, benfuchsarchive.com or benfuchsarchives.com. Either one works. It's a compilation of all the different websites, the, all my different websites, and I've got about six of them, and they're all compiled. Thank you to Peter in the UK for setting that up. There's also a search engine at benfuchsarchives.com. Com. You can also go to brightsideben.com or pharmacistben.com or criticalhealthnews.com. All the longevity products are available there as well. Uh, we do have another archive page at brightsideben.com, I should tell you. And then also uh, you can click on the Join the Team link and join the Brightside Ben team for a one-time $25 fee. You can be in business for yourself. You can also check out our Truth Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com, our Truth Retinol 5% gel or Truth Retinol 1% gel if you can't use the 5% gel or if you want to bump up your retinol dose. Got a nice video today from a gal. Uh, I do videos, by the way. If you're, uh, I'm uh, giving, off a, giving out a 25% discount on your next Truth order. If you've loved the Truth, and many of you have, I know I get lots of letters. And I uh, talked to a lot of you guys. If you have loved the truth and you want to do a video, just send us one. A quick, you can do one on your iPhone or your webcam. Just a quick 60-second video or so about uh, the benefits you've achieved from our Truth Skin Health products. And we'll get you 25% off your next order of Truth Skin Health products. They're all up at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. If you're interested in checking out some incredibly powerful and incredibly gentle incredibly non-toxic. We don't use any preservatives or toxic ingredients in any of our Truth Skin Health products. Uh, skin Health products, go to truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. All right, so uh, three kinds of fats, three kinds of dietary fats, I should say, phospholipids. Uh, lecithin is your classic example of phospholipid-based fat. Lecithin is made up of a bunch of phospholipids. Cholesterol is the second major type of dietary fat body makes most of the cholesterol in your blood, so you can't really control your cholesterol levels by eating less cholesterol and taking a statin drug is one of the dumbest medical strategies of all the dumb pharmacomedical strategies, and there are many. At or near the top is this idea that you should take a statin drug to get healthy or somehow improve your health by taking a statin drug. Whose interest do you think that's in, people? It ain't in our interest. It's not in the people's interest. It's not in the public's interest. It's in the pharmacological company's interest, and unless you own stock in a pharmacological company that's selling a statin drug, you would be better off making, care you took care, making sure you took care of your sugars and your, and your diet and exercising a little bit and making sure you're practicing your SDR breathing, slow, deep rhythmic breathing, than taking a statin drug. The third, cl the third class of fats are the triglycerides. Those are the ones most of us refer to when we talk about or when we think about dietary fats. We're thinking about the triglycerides. I'm sure you've heard that term. Tri means three. Glyceride refers to the fact that they're all traveling on a little piece of glycerin. That's what a triglyceride is. It's three different fatty acids and they're all stuck to a piece of glycerin. Triglycerides. And then these triglycerides are wrapped around in a lipoprotein so they can float around in the blood. Lipoproteins are what doctors measure when they want to measure how healthy you are, how healthy your blood is, or your predisposition to heart disease. And these lipoproteins carry cholesterol and they carry the triglycerides. And the amount of triglyceride that's circulating in your blood, unlike cholesterol, the amount of triglyceride that's circulating in your blood is a major indicator of cardiovascular health. Triglycerides, those matter. The cholesterol doesn't matter, that's irrelevant. The triglycerides, those matter. The more triglycerides you have floating around in your blood, the more prone you're going to be to cardiovascular disease. That's where you really want to be focusing on, not the cholesterol. How do you focus on triglycerides? You change the way you eat. Triglycerides come from the diet, from dietary fats, but interestingly, the triglycerides are also produced from carbs. They're produced from sugar. This is the main reason, or at least one of the main reasons, why controlling your sugar intake is so important for circulatory health. Carbohydrates are turned into triglycerides, and then they're wrapped around in a lipoprotein, and they float around in your blood. So the more sugar you're eating, and most of us, are, including myself, are eating way too much sugar in the form of, uh, sugar, in the form of sweets, in the form of sugar, in the form of uh, starches, in the form of cereals, in the form of breads. All of these end up as triglycerides, and all of them can end up in your blood, in addition to ending up on, in body fat. Triglycerides are the uh, molecules that we've been talking about in the last 
I don't know, a couple weeks, is coming in different sizes, different lengths. You got short triglycerides, you got medium triglycerides, you got large triglycerides. So your triglyceride is just a little piece of glycerin. It's got three fats. The fats are either going to be large, they're going to be medium, or they're going to be, or they're going to be short. We spent a lot of time talking about the medium chain triglycerides, piece of glycerin with three medium chain fats attached to them. We said these MCTs are medium chain triglycerides. And you're going to hear more and more about these. I just got an email from the, um, the um, Bulletproof Coffee guy. I forgot his name. Dave Osprey. I'm on his email list, and he's got a new product. It's a, I forgot what he calls it, but it's basically just an MCT oil. And so it's starting to get out there in the mainstream. This, I, I was, I've told you many times that I learned about MCT oils 40 years ago, almost 40 years ago, and 35 years ago or so when I was in pharmacy school. 1983 was 35 years ago. And then when I worked in hospitals, we used MCTs as medicine for people who had uh, gallbladder problems, for kids who had gallbladder problems. So I've known about MCTs for a long time. Gradually, over the course of the decades, it's become more and more well-known. It's now starting to become really well-known because these things are amazing. These MCTs are quick-acting body uses them for energy. You don't get fat from the MCTs. And they're especially important for brain health. If you know anybody who's got dementia or Alzheimer's disease, get them on the MCTs. And likewise for seizure disorders. Anybody who's got brain health issues, these MCTs are incredibly, incredibly valuable. If you're trying to lose weight, these MCTs are incredibly valuable because you can get your, you can get your fats and you get your enjoyment of fats without, having to get, without uh, getting fat. The MCTs don't make you fat. They just get used. But it's the long MCT or the long triglycerides that are the most important when it comes to the SAD, the standard American diet. And these long triglycerides or long chain triglycerides come in two classes. These long chain triglycerides, we'll call them, just call them long chain fats. And we'll dispense with the glycerin. So these long chain fats come in two classes. Chemical, chemists call them um, saturated and unsaturated. Saturated means they're solid, or saturated fats tend to be solid, I should say. I don't know of any liquid saturated fats. Um, unsaturated fats tend to be uh, liquidy. So you're saturated, unsaturated, you can generally think of them as liquidy fats and solid fats. The solid fats are the ones that get all the bad press. The saturated fats get all the bad press. Oh, guess what? They're really important, and they're really good for you. Sorry, doctor. Yes, the sa and, and by the way, doctors are becoming hip to the, uh, to the, the uh, mistake that they've made for probably 50 or 60 or 70 years since Ansel Keys came out with his lipid hypothesis that said saturated fats were behind heart disease. Still, there's still some boneheaded medical professionals out there who will tell you to stay away from saturated fats or just, just to eat the egg, egg white and not the egg yolk. And make no mistake about it, that is boneheaded advice. So the saturated fats, they have some serious health value. The, uh, and we'll talk, about, we'll talk about the unsaturated fats mostly because the unsaturated fats, those are the oily ones, those are the liquid ones. Those are the ones that are really in the, in the news and the, one most, the ones most of us think about when we think about dietary fats. But nonetheless, the saturated fats play a serious role, a very important role in health. The two main saturated fats, stearic acid and palmitic acid, are both produced by the body and they're both ingested as well. And they are very, very important when it comes to health. We will continue talking about fats and uh, we'll get to talking about here about uh, about uh, food that a lot of people are eating that shouldn't be eating that they're told to eat because it's supposed to be good for you we'll continue talking about that on our next bright side episode i'm pharmacist ben we'll be back after this okay welcome back to the bright side i'm pharmacist ben thanks for joining us 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you have questions about anything we're speaking about here today, fats, medium chain fats, phospholipids, eggs, legumes, or just a health challenge you or a loved one may be dealing with, or if you just want to contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. Ingevity products are all available at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. And our Truth Skin Health products are all up at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. 844-236-6010 is our number, and hang tight. If you're on hold, we will get to you here in just a moment. A couple interesting stories. A new Tel Aviv University study suggests that there are that there is hope in treating certain inborn congenital metabolic diseases. That's that is hope that's found in green tea and red wine. Most people with inherited metabolic disorders are born with a defective gene that results in a critical enzyme deficiency. Not true, but we'll just go with that. 
In the absence of a cure, many patients with inborn congenital metabolic disorders must adhere to a strict and demanding diet their entire lives. Researchers uh, from Tel Aviv University, writing in the journal Co Communications Chemistry, consider two compounds, one found in green tea called EGCG, epigallocatechin, you may have heard of that one. Uh, we talked about that before. And then tannic acid that are found in red wine are shown to prevent the formation of the structures, the amyloid plaques that form in the brain when you have Alzheimer's disease and Parkinson's disease. Nonsense. That is not an inborn metabolic disease. First of all, sorry, Dr. Shaham Neve, who says that uh, these are inborn congenital diseases. In other words, you have a genetic tendency to make amyloid plaques. No, you don't. Amyloid plaques, these plaques that cause problems in the brain, whether it's Parkinson's disease and Alzheimer's disease, and you know if you've listened to this program, that I think they're both the same. It doesn't matter where the darn amyloid plaques form. It doesn't have anything to do with the, where they form or what the end result is. It has to do with the fact that they're forming. It doesn't matter where they form. It matters that they form. Amyloid plaques are fibrosis, period. Fibrosis is the body's attempt to repair something that's been chronically damaged. Fibrosis in the liver causes cirrhosis. Fibrosis in the lungs causes pulmonary fibrosis. And fibrosis in the brain causes dementia, uh, Alzheimer's dementia, as well as Parkinson's disease. Both are the same disease. They're both uh, cirrhosis of the brain. They're both pulmonary fibrosis of the brain. They're both keloids of the brain. A keloid is fibrosis of the skin. Fibrosis is fibrosis is fibrosis. It doesn't matter where it's happening if you're interested in taking advantage or in leveraging the body's ability to heal it. If you're interested in reversing a fibrotic condition, you don't need a doctor. In fact, there's nothing a doctor can do to reverse a fibrotic condition, which is why there's no drugs for Alzheimer's disease and no drugs for Parkinson's disease, none that work anyway. And there's no drugs for cirrhosis of the liver. And there's no drugs for pulmonary fibrosis. And there's no drugs for keloids. And there's no drugs for any fibrotic condition. Because fibrosis is the body's attempt to repair something that's being chronically damaged. So if you have Alzheimer's, you need got to figure out how to re re repair. Or you know somebody who has Alzheimer's. you got to figure out how to repair, or help the body repair. Or better yet, stop putting the stuff in that's causing the damage. That's really your strategy for dealing with dementia, not so much to, to kill the fiber or fibroids or to prevent the fibroids from forming, and it's not a defective gene, FYI. The most important cause of chronic damage to the t uh, tissues of the body is sugar. It's called glycation. So the first thing you want to do if you have a fibrotic condition is stop eating the sugar and the carbs and then go low, go ketogenic. Now, if you have pulmonary fibrosis, the most important cause of that is smoking. So you've you got to eliminate the smoking, of course. But if you have fibro fibrosis anywhere in the body, consider that you're putting the wrong stuff in and the body is trying to defend itself. All right, 844 I'm going to do one more, and then, uh, then we'll get your phone calls. This is from the journal Cell Metabolism. Researchers show that the reward center of the brain values foods high in both fat and carbohydrates, i.e. many processed foods. No kidding. Most of us can't stop eating the fats and the carbs, and when they're combined, they're especially evil. The combination of fats and carbs is especially problematic. See, fats aren't really stored that effectively by the body. I mean, if you eat enough of them, they'll get stored, but you've got to have insulin present in order for storage to take place. Fat storage, nutrient storage, sugar storage. Insulin is what opens up cells and allows the fats to get into the cells. So when you're eating a high-carb, high-fat food, you've got the perfect recipe, the perfect combination for getting fats into fat cells, and that's where we get fat. It's the combination foods. Nobody really eats just fat, and nobody really eats, most of the time anyway, just sugar. What we eat are combinations of fats and sugar. Ice cream, combination of fats and sugar. Potato chips, combination of fats and sugar. Pizza, combination of fats and sugar. French fries, combination of fats and sugar. Most of the junk foods that we snack on, processed foods of all kinds, candy bars, most of these kinds of foods are combinations of fats and carbs, and that's where the problem comes in. However, our brain is wired to love fats and carbs. And here's the scary part. Our brain is wired to love fats and carbs when we're stressed or when we're depressed or when we're bummed out about anything or when our life is too hard. When our life is too hard in any way, shape, or form, whether it's anxiety, depression, stress, our lousy jobs, our credit card bills, our horrible relationships, whatever it is, 
We're going to eat more fats and carbs. We're going to go for the high reward foods. This is how the brain works. When it's under duress, it's going to look for high reward. That's the way it deals with duress. And the high, highest reward foods are the fat-carb combinations. Quote, researchers show that the reward center of the brain values foods high in both fat and carbohydrates, i.e. many processed foods, more than foods containing only fat or only carbs, unquote. So be really careful. How do you get, what's the best way to take care of your fat-carb uh, cravings? Fat and salt and protein. Combine fat and salt. Good, good salt, good fat. And uh, good protein, quality protein. That's the best way to wean yourself off of the fat-carb combinations. Get yourself, because salt, by the way, is also a uh, anti-stress molecule. The body will crave salt when it's under duress as much as it will crave sugar and fats. So giving yourself salt in the form of salt and giving yourself fats in the form of coconut oil, for example, or butter, salty butter. Now you get, you, it's kind of gross to think about eating a spoonful of salty butter, but it's probably pretty good for you. It's probably gross to think of us eating a spoon of, uh, of coconut oil with salt, but it's probably good for you. At least do your, do your coconut oil with your eggs. Make some hard-boiled eggs, put coconut oil and salt. Mm -mm, good. Or if you like, use Udo's Blend. That's what I do. I use Udo's Blend, coconut oil, uh, Udo's Blend, I'm sorry, Udo's Blend, a salt, Celtic sea salt, and sometimes I'll do a spice called Tony Chachery's, which is an awesome Cajun spice, with hard-boiled eggs. It is so delicious, you can't stop eating them. Yeah, I have to force myself not to eat six or eight eggs. All right, eight four four two three six sixty ten. That's called hacking into your cravings, by the way. Using your craving, cravings to leverage good health rather than letting your cravings use you uh, to leverage uh, unhealth to, or to end up un with unhealth. All right, eight four four two three six sixty ten is our number. Let's go to Edwin in Michigan. Thanks for holding on so long, Edwin. Do, do, do. Good morning. How's it going, buddy? Oh my God, there's the oh, music. Oh, good. Oh. Ed Edwin, I get, I, I, sorry to do that to you. I hate to do that to you. All right, eight four four two three six sixty ten is our number. I'm pharmacist Ben. You're listening to the bright side, and we'll be back with your phone calls eight four four two three six sixty ten right after this. Pharmacist Ben here. We're in Michigan talking to Edwin. Good morning, Edwin. What's up, buddy? Good morning. Hey, uh, since you talk uh, often about oxygenating the body, hmm. uh, there was a, a, a product that I used for on and off for quite a few years. And I should mention the name, but... It's an old mention white, the name. Uh, what? No, mention the name. Oh, yeah. It, okay. It's uh, called Cell Food. Okay. And... Uh, I it's like a drop. Did it, did it come in? A, it came in a drop. It was like a liquid drop. Yeah. Dropper. Yeah, they're like yeah, liquid I, drops. Yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, and but I came across some guy on YouTube that was telling everyone, "This is the deuterium sulfate is sulfuric acid, and you're cutting yourself." Not you, quite. Not quite. Is yeah. that what was in? Is that what was in the cell food? Yeah, I think it's called deuterium sulfate. I think and, the cell um, food, as, correct me if I'm wrong, but as I recall, the cell food was like homeopathic doses of things, not real, real well, doses. Is that right? Like homeopathic doses um, of minerals, very tiny uh, yeah, doses I'm, of I'm not sure. Okay, yeah, I got to do my... Has, I, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. It has uh, amino, acid, amino acids and um, uh, the deuterium sulfate, and what else does it have? Uh, I can't remember. I, I I stopped buying it because I'm just not sure. About I, I would. Sure the way it worked money. is you did a couple of drops of the stuff, and it was meant not to be nutritional. It was meant to be. A, it was meant to work in a, a kind of homeopathic, uh, from a homeopathic uh, mechanism. It it was made basically of a uh, of so-called dissolved oxygen. Deuterium is an has an extra atom of oxygen, so it's they, mm -hmm. deuterium was supposed to provide oxygen. You're not supposed to get oxygen in the stomach. That's not how you get oxygen. So I call BS right off the top, right off the top of the bat. It does have some. It's made with. It was made with minerals, as I recall. I think it might have been seawater minerals. Yeah. Is that right? 
yeah, see Waterman? Yeah, I think that's true. But you're only doing a drop or two of the stuff. You're not going to get – I mean, you may get good stuff. Maybe the seawater minerals may be helpful for you, but you only get a drop or two. I, I, that, I, I put that in, my, uh, in the category of BS health products. I, I don't know enough about it to say for sure. But my hunch is, even mm-hmm. though it's supposed to contain a wide variety of minerals and other things, uh, and uh, I, it sounds like BS to me. It is a, the, mm-hmm. Its claim to fame is it provides oxygen to the cells. I'm not buying it. Mm-hmm. That's my opinion. Okay. Okay. All right. All right, right, buddy. I I wouldn't worry about the deuterium, though. I wouldn't worry about the deuterium. That's not a big deal. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, One more question about uh, high hyaluronic acid. Yeah. Uh, Good. You said that very well. Okay. Thanks. I started taking um, 180 milligrams on an empty stomach uh, in the morning. I mean, is that uh, that the right? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I take I take like three, four hundred grams of milligrams a day. Uh, of hyaluronic acid. Awesome supplement. Well, it's such a great supplement, hyaluronic acid, because it has so many different things. It it works on so many different parts of the body because it's connective tissue. So anywhere where we have connective tissue, hyaluronic acid supplements can help. That means the skin for wrinkles, for healing. That means uh, the uh, uh, the uh, muscles and the joints for arthritis or inf- inflammatory health issues. That means pre-surgery and post-surgery, especially for plastic surgery. It's just an incredibly valuable supplement, in my opinion. Yeah, I'm taking the Gero brand. Yeah, Gero's so a good true. brand. I, Gero's a good brand. You can yeah. take 180 is great. You can take more than that. Like I say, I take three or 400 okay. milligrams a day. All right, I'm going to uh, get, get one anything time? else. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, take more. Yeah, 300 at one time. At one time is okay. At one. Yeah, heck yeah. In the you'll get it. In, you'll get it in, in a bone broth. <laughs> Excuse me. You'll get some in bone broth. Bone broth protein may have a little bit as well. Uh, but take the straight supplement. It's a little pricey. That's the only downside. It's a little bit pricey, but. Uh, yeah. Uh, it's just really valuable. I have it in my skincare products too. I have a new uh, cleanser coming out here, hopefully in the next week. Honey or hyaluronic acid with honey cleanser. It's not it's topically; it doesn't have the same great benefits internally, although it will soften the surface of the skin very effectively. Hey, I want to get to a couple more calls. Are you good, Edwin? Anything okay. else? All right, yeah. good. Yeah, all right. thanks a lot. I appreciate Thank it. Thank you, man. Have a great day. Rosie in Tennessee, good morning. What's going on? Good morning, Ben. I've talked to you last year. I had the surgery. I had Hockam disease in my heart that thickened the wall, and they okay. shaved it. And now it's going to be a year in August. But okay. uh, after that, I I had to go back to the sleep study. And okay. <clears throat> I have a severe uh, uh, sleep apnea. Uh, mm. I know how's your I have we- to lose weight. I'm yeah, I was about to ask. You took, the words, you took the words right out of my mouth. I was about to say, how's your yeah, weight? Yeah, and I'm <laughs> on therapy with the breathing. I remember you talking about the breathing. My blood pressure went down since they put me on a therapy, air therapy for my nose, my face. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Hang on, hang on, Rose. You say you got the hair. Yeah, find that I have a severe sleep S- apnea. Hang on. Time I I'm on breathing. A- Hang on just a second. Hang on just a second. The hyperbaric oxygen, they put you on hyperbaric oxygen. Is that what you said? No, no, no oxygen. They give me an air, air machine to breathe okay. in my face. I got you. And the blood pressure dropped. Two weeks, two weeks, my blood pressure went from 151 and all over to 125. And how, how do you like that? Today. How do you like um, that? Just a little bit of and, oxygen. Yeah. Okay, but you're still not. Uh, you still have the same. Saying to everybody to breathe deep to get yes. your blood pressure down. Yes, very important. And, so uh, easy. And what uh, do you know about the sleep apnea? Let me help Can you with I that. Because get normal again, or I yeah, have to yeah, yeah. Let me help you with that. My face every night. No, no. Let me help you. You got to work on the blood sugar, and you'll know you're working on the blood sugar when you lose weight. Okay. So do, what do you okay. need to lose? Thirty pounds? How much you need to lose? At I'm okay. 192, 93 sometimes. You got to lose the weight. You got to focus have to on the be 135, maybe 140. We're gonna. It's gonna take uh, maybe six months, but you can do it. But you have to do it, Ro- uh, uh, Rosie. Yeah. You absolutely yeah. have to focus on the weight. There's many other things you have to do, but if you focus on the weight and the weight drops off, you'll know you're in the, heading in the right direction. Most importantly okay. is the sugar. You have to have messed up blood sugar. So focus on blood sugar issues. Stay, stay away yeah. from foods that uh, spike your sugar. Go ketogenic. Use the you, sweeties. All of that. When you said the carb bro had sugar too, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, I'm not sure what you meant by that, but, but in any case, the car, I, I you got to be careful. Keto- car- Caramel uh, weight uh, shake, and uh-huh. uh, I seem yeah. to forget to take it. But if I take that weight car- keto car- caramel weight management, it's sugary too, isn't it? 
I would, I would, no, I wouldn't do that. That you got to go straight protein. Go, go. If in my opinion, I wouldn't use anything that spiked your blood sugar, and that very well could spike your blood sugar. Now, keep in mind when you do protein, that can spike your blood sugar if you're not using the protein. So you don't want to overdo the protein either. Go ketogenic and low calorie. And listen, I've got only got about a minute, but this is a very important subject. So I'm going to go really, I'm going to throw a lot of information at you. And I want everybody else to hear this because this is really important. Sleep apnea and many other health challenges backtrack to the blood sugar system. And you can't, it, it, it gives you a great way to focus on one goal. If you understand the relationship between blood sugar and all the various health challenges, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, sleep apnea, heart uh, circulatory issues. If you focus on the blood sugar and use weight as a guide you'll head in the right direction so yeah. work on work on low, go ketogenic low calorie low carb high fat go ketogenic first things first secondly use nutrients that help your body process sugar niacin yeah. the ultimate niacin ultimate selenium uh, sweeties yeah. of course that goes without saying more fiber Use fiber to fill up when you feel like snacking on something. Use flaxseed fiber, grind it up, put it in water, drink okay. flaxseed. Grind it up, drink, put it in water, drink it down. I, put a I pinch have. of stevia in there if you need some flavor. A pinch of stevia with cinnamon and clove. That will help fill you up and it will be great for your digestive system. Then the, speaking okay. of the digestive system... Any problem foods have to be eliminated. It's an absolute must. You eliminate problem foods. And also... Lactose intolerance. Lactose and anything. Intolerance fructose, and absolutely. Dye. Glucose, Red gluten intolerance. Body, blue, whatever. You know, you, you know all of this stuff. Red and yellow and... and I took Power A, then I found Red 40 in it, and I was breaking up in rashes. Well, Red 40 is a to problem, too. I have my diet. Yeah, I have all to of that. Let me say. Let me give you a couple more things real quick, and then I want to get one okay. last call if I can, okay? A couple more things. Yeah. Don't forget yeah. to keep your cortisol down. That means relaxing your body. The body will interpret how. when you when the cortisol goes up. Eventually, you're going to get over. You're going to have weight problems. The body yeah. interprets stress as starvation, or at least starvation is one of the main historically from an evolutionary standpoint. Starvation yeah. was a big stress. So cortisol and stress hormones will tell the body it's got to keep weight on. So relax or reducing your cortisol by using relaxation strategies is also important. Hey Rosie, I want to get one more call in. Thank you. So much. I appreciate it. Hope, hope we helped you out. Hey, Mark, you get the last word, buddy. What's going on? Stupid. Real quick. I had yeah. um, um, a question about ear infection, adult ear infection. I got one like at the end of flu, and then also along with that, it seemed like a little bit of tinnitus started. And, um, okay. It, but it's been going on forever, but it's been it's really mild. And you know, uh, Mark, I hate to do this to you, buddy, but you're, I have no connection. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. I heard something about an ear infection. Uh, if you call back tomorrow, I'll get your first up. I apologize. I know you've been on hold for a while. Uh, I just couldn't, can't make out what you're saying. And that's okay, it. That's all you. the time. Thank you, Mark. Take care. Uh, that's all the time we have for today. Thank you so much for listening to The Bright Side. Don't forget to check out our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com for all the longevity products, and truthtreatments.com for our truth skin health products. Have yourselves a wonderful, beautiful, awesome, spectacular day. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now. 